Reese, yo, how's it going, bro? It is great. <laughs> it is good. Like what? Well, like your phone blowing up there? What's going on? You know, man's is trying to social media wild podcasting. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm a millennial now, but like, podcasting, man. <laughs> yeah, that's like when you're, you're performing. Um, you're performing, and like, in fact, the, the same thing that we went to the other day. Yeah, in, um, at Hilton. At Hilton. So Marshall performing, uh-huh. and everybody, nobody dancing. Yeah. Everybody has their phones out yeah. and they're yeah. recording. Yeah, you, you know. Tell them about these. And he kind of, yeah, he tell them about it. Are you working for CNN? No, he said, are you working for TTT or CNN or something like that? Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, but I mean, you kind of must see a lot of that, no? Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. I think there's more people just trying to capture moments. Yeah, and rather than be in it, they just want to capture it and. To post later, you know, I was mm. there. I was there when this happened, and you know, they just want to feel like you know, yeah. you heard it here first, kind of vibe now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's what people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Hmm. definitely. But I mean, the thing is, like, you you would put your phone out for the whole performance. Yeah, that I don't understand. Like, I could understand you take a little clip. Yeah, and then you know you delete it. I'm mean, yeah. sorry, <laughs> you put mm. your phone away. Yeah, but I see people sign up for the whole thing. Yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. That, I think that's definitely a generational thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, older folks would film the whole thing. Like I would see kind of a time we play in on a truck or whatever. Right. And there's like a, a, a old dude with like <laughs> never an iPad. It's like a right. tablet just standing there mm. filming the entire thing. I'm like. <laughs> I always wonder, so what Pop's going to do with that now? Like, so, <laughs> so if I'm not, then what? You edit it, you put it together, you put music behind it to advertise, show that, I don't know. You just, yeah. you just, you just have that just to show a little family and, uh, some and whoever, you know? If Although so they're on Facebook too, you know, the older ones seem yeah. to be. In fact, I think that I believe that's where most of the growth is right now with yeah. like, with like, 60 and over you know okay. right mm-hmm. now like mm-hmm. my mom and all of her friends yeah. and everybody on, yeah. On, yeah. On, on, Facebook. on Facebook I think the cool thing for them is finding people like yo you remember this person yeah. from school yeah. like yeah. they're having their moments now that yeah. we yeah. had like yeah, years ago like, when we yeah. first joined like oh so you know I mean see how she named blah 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 exactly. and they try to find them online and then yeah. you know it's, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> cool exactly exactly it is definitely yeah mm-hmm. So if we could wheel back a little bit so yeah. you would be best known for um, Boom Boom Room yeah. And then um, file five miles at midnight yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're the drummer for for that band. And yes. then for 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 those who don't know, like what is Boom Boom Room? Um, Boom Boom Room for like <laughs> what I tell some people is a percussion party band. That's what we say when we travel. Yeah, right. but, but but for Trinidad, it's a rhythm section. Yeah. Right. But yeah. okay. a skilled on rhythm section. A rhythm section is normally like six plus people. Yeah. We're only two people. Right. So we. Just took the idea of a rhythm section and tried mm-hmm. to have the same energy of a rhythm section yeah. with something a little bit more easier to move with, yeah. um, easier suited to an indoor event, you yeah. know, and just kind of make it more acceptable. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. so that's what the boom room is about. Yeah. Right. And as you, and also. And, Ma- and, and my boy Madupe o- o- Onelu. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Right, right, okay. Yeah. So what is, he, what is the current setup? Um, I, you want like specific like the, like the, the actual gear, gear. yeah, oh, yeah cool. in terms of the drums wow. and like yeah. how you describe right? <laughs> yeah, this. Um, cool. because the rhythm section like you know yeah, everybody know like the, the metal and the drums and right. everything and the, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean so what I do because I'm a drummer I'm accustomed to playing to like a regular drum kit yeah so what I have I have a snare and a float on and on the float on I have a cowbell and a top top which would give you the simulation of like iron now. Yeah, yeah. Because right. yeah. if you ever actually lift for iron, it's actually a car rim now. Yeah. Yes. yeah. That's no bueno. That's super heavy. Yeah. You can't go nowhere with that. Yeah. You will die trying to carry that around. Yeah. And then um, I have symbols. I use symbols and, and stuff. And then, so Madupe, he uses a cowbell as well. Right. Sometimes two. He has bongos, a floor right. tom, and two crashes. Uh, sometimes yeah. one crash would be a china, and we'll switch it out just to. Give us a, again a different tune, a different song. So yeah. it's like a modern version of a of, a rhythm, of a rhythm section. section. Yeah. And we more, no, we more. Our thing is that we play to the music. Right. A yeah. rhythm section would usually when the music cuts off. Yeah, they, they play playing on their own. Yeah, so this know, is a, this is a complimentary. Precisely, uh, it's a complimentary song. That is the exact way that we use. We complement what the DJ is doing. We know the songs. We do hits. Sometimes we come with our own arrangements. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's what people like. It's it, it doesn't get like weird. Now. It's like. 
Okay. Maybe they can stop now. <laughs> they actually play any song with the hits and, and kind phrase. And it adds it. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, yeah. adds to the music. No, nah, but like I um I did the 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 two year we call it a visa in um in England. So I was in like London for almost two years. Nice. And I kind of hit up somebody like the kind of festival scene mm-hmm. and you know somebody um you know electronic music type right. events. And it's real common to have a DJ mm-hmm. and then right on the stage, they yeah. bring up somebody either. It could be a dude with a violin mm-hmm. yeah, or it could yeah, be yeah. A, a dude with drums yeah. or a trumpet mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's wicked. Like the crowd goes yeah. crazy. It's, it's more so, vibes, added yeah, vibes. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's like added definitely. vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So is, is, that, is that same kind of definitely. complimentary definitely. sound? But more within the Caribbean community. So exactly. even more Caribbean-based events. Yeah. Um, it's only of late I started to still do Caribbean events, but I started to connect because it was part of my drive to do things outside of Soka now because yeah. I'm seeing Boom 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 as not just a two-man rhythm section. I'm thinking, I really want to do something big now. I want to yeah. take yeah. Caribbean culture to the world. So, big up Walshy Fire, big up Silent Addy, big up Max right. Glazer. These guys are guys that take taking Caribbean culture to another level. Mm, Walshy's yeah. with Major Laser, Silent Addy. He moves with them and, and that side of things where it's like a different Caribbean element. So it's a Caribbean party with not too many Caribbean people now. Yeah. yeah okay. Who just appreciate the culture and love it, love yeah. the dances of the music and love what it represents now. Yeah. So yeah, playing yeah. those events are always, always dope. And yeah, that's kind of yeah. what we're trying to do now. So the actual kit itself, because uh, I, I saw it, I, saw, I mean, I've seen it on your on your Instagram and I saw it at, at Hilton as well. Uh-huh. It looks like custom. How you, how was it built? Is it something custom built? Um, no, actually, we have a couple kits. And that's another thing. We try to... I try to always think of like how to be fresh, how to be innovative. It's just right, like okay. you would change your t-shirt tomorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same thing we try to do with drums. You try to have a couple sets to suit different things. Yeah, okay. So, so playing at night, we the, the kit you saw at Hilton yeah. was an acrylic kit. Yeah. So okay. next you would know yeah, DW. Yeah, yeah. So I have a DW flutter, I'm a DW snare, mm-hmm. and he bought and we bought a matching clear bongos. Okay. So his bongos are clear, and then we wrap some lights around them. So it definitely ah. Kind of t- takes it to another level now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just trying to again appeal visually to people now. Yeah. Okay, and then so you have sticks that glow as well. Yeah, as well. We, we bought those, but bro, <laughs> those are such a waste of money. Yeah. Yo, by the time you play once with that, it's done and it's not cheap. It's like twenty two dollars a pair. Right. And by the time you play with it three, four times yeah. in the same night, not three, four days, eh? Oh. Three, four gigs. Same night, yeah. One side stop working because it's, it's really a toy. Oh, you're not talking about battery. You're talking about like from the from the yeah from from the hitting. From the hitting, definitely it's, done. It's, yeah, it's, it's done. done. Right. Okay. Yeah. Forget it. Okay. So, so uh, it's not it's not a custom built kit, but it's very customizable. And you yeah, definitely. Switch it up depending so on. So like, um, I actually made my tom legs longer because boom room is a standing setup. Normally, if yeah. I'm playing drums, I sit. Yeah. But boom room is standing, so I got like a fabricator to make like longer legs. Right. And well, Madupe is like the massive. I have to. Like kudos to him. He's like a real gear lord now. He yeah. real mm-hmm. understand gear and like real tech. So he kinda come together with different ideas. Yeah. Like for us to have to move with less gear and like so he bought all these clamps and showed me all these clamps that we yeah. use right. to make the setup super easy to move it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So how was it even formed? Like how did you guys meet and then how was it formed? Oh, good question. Like good, what good, was good, the vision? Good, good question. So his oh I actually knew him before I knew him. I knew <laughs> me before I knew him. Because our dads both played with Andre Tanker. Ah. My dad played guitar with Andre Tanker, and his dad was the drummer, was the right. percussionist. Okay. Right. So they had a friendship from like in the 80s and stuff when Andre Tanker was doing really, really well. Right. And uh, I guess they just knew each other from back then, and then they stayed friends for years. Yeah. Unfortunately, until his dad's on time, he passed in. And, yeah. um, and that's how I knew him. And then uh, my cousin is Hoppy, Casey Hopkinson, big up. Right, Casey. okay. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. does scotch. And, yeah. you know, he was like, yo, cuz, I think you should bring the drums in the boat one day. I was like, what? Yeah, dog, why not? <laughs> Go parties, meet girls, why not? For free? What? That's just great. Like, we thought it was like the best thing no. ever. No. <laughs> nah, I know <laughs> we thought it was the best thing ever. So back then, Keshav used to play with us. Right, right, right. right. Me, Madupe, Keshav and myself. Okay. And uh, again, it was just all fun and... That's how it started, and because Scorch, so you all go to the Scorch fets, and, right? And, and because Scorch everybody. was doing so well at that time, and a lot of people went to the events. People see us there, and they were like, "Yo, yeah. it's kind of dope." Who yeah. are you guys? You guys taking bookings? And we like, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Take my number, and it just started from there. Right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, uh, did it have like a name right away, or or, or uh, did you nah. have to come up with a name? Like, what? yeah, we were, we were struggling. So, because of Scotch, we used to call us the Scotch rhythm section. But that really work if you're playing for other promoters. Of course, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't want the Scotch rhythm section. Yeah, yeah. We want a rhythm section. Yeah, or whatever. And um, I don't know why. 
I thought of Boom Boom Room, but I didn't come up with it definitely because the Boom Boom Room is that thing that Martin Lawrence and Eddie Murphy spoke about in that movie Life. He's mm-hmm. like, yo, if we ever get out of here, I'm going to club, call a, open a club called the Boom Boom Room, blah, blah, blah. Right. And there's actually a spot in San Francisco that people always tag us as and vice versa. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, right. the boom. So I just, I just thought it would be kind of fun. Like Boom yeah. Boom Drums, Boom Boom Guilds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. work now. And it yeah. kind of comes off the tongue. It's a conversational piece. Why Boom Boom Room? That's a dumb name. Thank you. At least right. we're talking about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's kind of where it came from. And I just thought it was catchy and fun and yeah. kind of represented a yeah. bit of what we did. So basically, you would, you would play at an event, people would see you all, love you all, and you're like, what's your number? Well, it definitely was and your number. And then kind of like, um, they see you and then they book you. Yeah, kinda pretty thing. much. That's exactly what happens almost at every event we play. Right. People ask for a number or like a card, so we started printing cards, etc. Yeah. And then, well, obviously, social media was super, super, super helpful. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that would play a big part in helping us, um, just being, having our social media presence, posting things, mm-hmm. or playing, like allowing people to tag us and reposting their stuff and just having fun. Yeah. So where where you been so far? I mean, where where have you all performed? Um, what, when, what actually, countries? when when did this all start? What what year that was? I would say in the 2013-2014. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and um, it started then, and but the traveling thing started because because of my status, I had to be in the states a lot. And okay. there's a team that works with squads very closely called Icebox Entertainment. Some trainees who live in New York. Mm-hmm. And they throw so parties. kind of Caribbean fets. And Caribbean fets. But they yeah. were like a bit different to Caribbean fets. They're more upscale kind of mm-hmm. vibes. Like, mm-hmm. You know? And I was friends with one of the girls. And I was like, yo, listen, I'm here. I would love to come and play at your party. No, yeah. no money, of course. Yeah. And we went. And again, because their party was like the it party. Uh-huh. Like Scorch, everyone was there. Right. Yeah. And they're like, yo. Who's a fire? Like, who are these guys? Like, yo, this is good. Like, where's your number? Blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. Y'all can come up to do this event. And then, yeah. when I check my schedule, he's like, I have 10 shows in New York. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> All right, then. Cool. Yeah. And then, at each one of those 10 shows, there's two people. Mm-hmm. Oh, they just do weddings? Uh, or oh, weddings, mm. too. Uh, yeah, actually, we could. Come and think of it <laughs> like, not? I mean, why not? Yeah. I have a shit. I can buy a jacket in each of them. Let's right. make this happen. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. that is just how it grew. Right, okay. It grew super nice and super organic. Organic. We just into it and yeah. into the vibe. And again, it wasn't as expensive as the rhythm section. Yeah. And it wasn't as space yeah, they yeah, don't occupy space as much space. Wise, yeah, 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 yeah. When you when you fly up to New York now, you you, you take it, you move in your whole kit. Or, yeah, I or usually like to rent something. There? I usually like to. How uh, does that work? Rent it in New York. Does it is, break down into? Yeah, 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 that's the cool part. So we bought this big bag, um, mm-hmm. a bag from a company called Protect that pretty much held all the gear, mm-hmm. and um, it it worked pretty fine. Checking it in is always funny. Mm-hmm. So it was like, when there. When do you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a new player again. Is it G? He always makes sure it weighs 50. Right. 10 right. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though you might have to put your foot underneath it a little bit when the lady's not looking. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not good. <laughs> but, um, Boy, I need to try that one. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. even know that was Listen, a tech. I didn't know that was a tech. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we usually take it up because the, the kit is so different now. Right. And um, actually, no, again, thanks to Malupe, he had some timbales. And right. you know how floor tums can be pretty big. Yeah. So he had this idea to use timbales, which are much shorter, mm. same width, yeah. same um, circumference, sorry, mm. but much shorter in depth. So it yeah. gives you more room. Yeah. So now we're using timbales as tums, and those are a dream to travel with. And yeah. because New York is like home, I leave like the heavier bits in New York. So I have like a um, a boom stand that I would leave in New York and anytime I go I'll just use that. So I just fly up in my drums, the covers and stuff. Again, not super heavy. Yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah. drums, my drums come to always to do something punks even with a cymbal on top of it. Right, okay. So it's, right. so it's, so it's never never too like heavy or anything like that. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's cool. So what are what are, what other countries you've been in? Um all right, Saudi Caribbean um we did we do Barbados Carnival, we do Tobago obviously. Right. Um there's a lot of stuff happening uh, after Carnival and Tobago. Yeah. Then we do Crop Over Carnival, which was beautiful this year. Yeah. Had a great, great, great time. Had the pleasure of working with Rihanna's brother. Wait, he okay. actually owns a mass band as well as a company that throws events. So we did three of his events. It was completely, it was so much fun. Wait. Got really, really nice treatment. He was yeah. like so cool, mm-hmm. super, super, super chill. Didn't get to meet her, but you know, it was fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm um, going up the islands. We have been to Jamaica. We did Jamaica Carnival last year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it was very, very interesting because I've always heard so many things about Jamaica like uh, it's about a crime and 
like it's such a disparity in, in the and they probably think about uh, about Trinidad the same way too <laughs> yeah, right, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, Trinidad boy I ain't going there at all <laughs> right and again of, of course we went and it was fine um, yeah. and then going up again we do Miami Carnival most years so actually leave next week Wednesday mm-hmm. um, for Miami Carnival and then New York is like a second base for us because yeah. that's really where I got my lift off in the American scene um, mm-hmm. right. did a bunch of stuff in DC so I do yeah. a lot of stuff in DC there's a Caribbean pocket there um so you across the Atlantic as yet? No, boy. That's right, okay. definitely... Because I our... feel as a whole next yeah, scene. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's diaspora in, in London and, and mm-hmm. even Germany has like a, a huge yeah. soccer scene yeah. Yeah. and I, reggae I, scene. And, yeah. you know. and as I said before, remember, we even trying to do things outside of the Caribbean scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why I would love to go to Europe. But yeah. because New York is like home, it was easy to go there. Right. I we do really don't know anybody on that side of the globe, really. Mm. Oh, so yeah. to make a move over there would take a lot more planning and a yeah, lot yeah, more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have to be a little more careful going like like going out there. I mm-hmm. mean, visa wise, it's super easy or whatever. We really want to do it, mm-hmm. but I don't know anybody in the ground. So, I don't know if Bus Pepper is still around, but there was this guy, um, Martin Hepburn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Used to show um, the the Bus Pepper fets in London, and I was like, same thing. Like it was. Um, a little fan, Up, fan, upscale. fancier like yeah, yeah. upscale or whatever like always in, in nice areas and it would be West Indians yeah. and they would bring their English friends right okay you know and okay. I mean of course they play in soccer and reggae yeah, yeah. and uh, real nice. cool real cool vibe yeah I mean I could I could see you all inside there like yeah mashing up as well that'd be fun you know? I would, trust me Europe would be such a vibe also yeah. we did Canada this year the first time yeah yeah met this guy who's actually Trini who played in the NBA Jamal Malgo big up him mm-hmm. he has a massive band called the Toronto Revelers yeah uh, he's actually also the assistant coach to the Toronto Raptors so we played for him for his event and it was just amazing yeah his yeah. band launch and he's like a super fan of the group now he's really 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 nice to us so yeah. looking forward to doing more things in Canada so yeah. I just love that place it's like a real chill yeah, yeah, easy yeah, going yeah. place yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. so was the um, what's sort of like the the vision for Boom Boom Room like how big you want to take it you want to take it to the level where you're just like you have a website and you're seeing all the tour dates and yeah, definitely. you're booked throughout the whole year. You're traveling around the world. You're doing this thing full definitely. time. Mm-hmm. I would. My goal is to really, our goal I should say is to really take Trinidadian culture to the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to be the most sought after them in drums. Not just playing, but production mm-hmm. as well. Because I also did drums on Soka Kingdom. We just right. did something with full-blown entertainment. We recorded with Ola Twin Jerry. So I want to get into that feel as well now. Mm-hmm. Like adding production value. Like you could go to us for drums. And right. you could make your track knock by playing live and probably even programming some stuff. Yeah. So that is the kind of level I want to take it at. Yeah. To really be like yeah. a household name when you think of drums. Even if I can't do it, I can give you somebody number who could do it. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of want to be that go-to person. And of course, I would love my dates to be rammed out play yeah. with famous DJs like yeah. like, like Madupi I was saying he would love to do Coachella yeah. Tomorrowland different things like yeah, that yeah, so yeah. like a nice set carry them yeah. same light up drums and go crazy you know I think that would yeah. be real fun and, and Tomorrowland is what, is the, what is the other big one in the desert where they, they burn oh, burning thing man. Yeah. burning yeah. man burning yeah. man yeah. Hmm. and then there's a the big one in England as well um, Reading that, like, a wood, Reading. like a Woodstock like, oh uh, what's that one called again boy Really yeah, nice. it's like a huge festival. Is it? Is is actually Boomtown? Is it is that Boom? Well, I don't know if that's what Justin is thinking of, but there's one called Boomtown in, in the UK. Okay. And uh, Keisha have actually played yeah, that, yeah. A, a few times. So okay. I don't know. Maybe I'll talk and maybe I'll link it, develop there. Yeah, now, uh, trust me, that's something I would love. love boom, love, boom, love. room at Boomtown. Boom that's that's something good to me. That's something like a plan. <laughs> that's something like a vibe for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, your your schedule gets booked up real quick, though. Yeah. Be- because yeah. To, to, to get you here today was, like, <laughs> trying to, like, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because also, the the room, I also have other, other commitments. So, yeah, time is always a funny thing. But mm-hmm. um, I'll be honest, I really, 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 really love it. Yeah. I'd much rather be too busy than... But you know what I mean? Nothing going on. Today, no? yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just pulled up this thing. It's so Glastonbury. Ah, Glastonbury. yeah, Glastonbury yeah. is huge, yeah, huge, yeah, huge, yeah. huge, 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 huge. 
And it's also such different genres of mm-hmm. music, and it's this massive mm-hmm. like campsite kind of kind of vibes. Like, yeah. man, you would, would they'd blow up all those kind of things. Boy. I would love to for do sure. Look like a DJ, do like a nice set. Yeah, and that yeah, trust me, those are the things we want to do. So you'll have mm-hmm. a manager. Or what At the moment, no. For right. enough, we all so you're kind of doing it all yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We have one guy. His name is Miguel Kisto. He actually worked with Marshall for many years. Right. He kind of helps us in terms of like tour managing, like. Logistics liaison, he helped us in Barbados, he helped us, he helped us in Trinidad. Mm-hmm. Um, but to say I'm manager, that's a real hard thing for me because I spent so many years creating relationships and meeting so many people. Mm-hmm. I definitely would say that I'm popular, but mm-hmm. I made it my job to know certain people now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm very connected. Yeah. So for somebody to manage me, that'd be more connected than me. Yeah, you want to be able to, hey, you know him? Oh, I don't know that man. Okay, cool. <laughs> you could put that and make things Now, knowing point. people is yeah. one thing, right? But the whole business side and the contracts mm. and the, and the you know, like some of these good managers that might be sort of like maybe l- lawyers, like they know entertainment law yeah. or whatever yeah. As, yeah. as well, you know? Yeah. So I mean, depending on, on the level. size of the of the gig, that mm-hmm. would be needed or, or not. Yeah. You know? um, I would definitely, definitely want something like that because I would love to just focus on playing more. Exactly. And mm-hmm. have exactly. Have to worry about you just stuff. walk in. And then when it comes to like the negotiations yeah. Yeah, of yeah. how much and yeah. da, 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 and, yeah. and you know what I mean, you have like your managers. Yeah. But I mean, to get to that level, you already had to be, you know, you when you book solid and then you have time, you don't have time yeah. to deal with that anymore. Yeah. Now, but but know? our team is great. So we have Miguel and we have a lady named Ruby. She helps mm-hmm. us with like all the administrative stuff. Mm-hmm. Or like if I need a flight, right, the hotel, she oh, can nice. deal with all of that for me. And yeah. she yeah. kind of we kind of have her on staff. Not kind of she on staff. Right? Yeah. Pretty much <laughs> what it is. So we're really great in that department. But I just in terms of management, management is such a tricky thing because they yeah. represent you now. Yeah. And I pride myself on being, I mean, I don't think I'm a kiss ass, but I definitely know how to deal with people now. Yeah. yeah. Because of As the, important. Yeah. Because of the mama background in catering and, and, and food and beverage, he doesn't right. know how to deal with people. Yeah. So I, I pride myself on that and I think I need to find somebody like that who knows how to deal with people. Like, mm-hmm. cause, you know, Sometimes I can make or break a deal. Yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah, for I, sure. I don't want to mess up sure. anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for real, for real, for real. Hmm. So how did you even get into drumming in the, in, in the first place? In the first place? Is it like a musical family? Like when, when, um, did, you, when did you pick up your, your drum kit? Definitely, I have to give, I'm not religious, but I believe that there's a higher power. And I think I hmm. was given that creativity by God. Yeah. And I think I was, I am my biggest influence is still my dad because he, again, growing up playing music, always playing music in the house. Right, of course. He played yes, guitar, yes, quattro, that, yeah. different, different things. And yeah. mm-hmm. always listening to music like as a kid. I think that definitely, I soaked that into my subconscious. So you had a musical upbringing. There was always music definitely, in Definitely, the, always in music the, yeah. in the house. And then yeah. um, I just remember, I don't know what, made me try oh I know what it is yeah. so because my dad played guitar I want to play guitar yeah. so I started taking <laughs> guitar lessons by this guy in town or whatever it was going okay but I realized ah yeah this is not for me so I started getting into trouble and thinking in one class I'm having to do lines and thinking this one class I'm writing I must not blah 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 in guitar class it was crazy yeah but it would be two pen thing <laughs> yo that always helped in fact right? if you have the pro level is three pens <laughs> <laughs> I tried the four pens already in Fatima. Ed, three pens, <laughs> you can, you can yeah. kind of pull it off. Yeah, yeah, four pens, the, the teachers be like, you know, these looking exact. Exact, exact. It almost look like a photocopy. You understand? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so, my next to the, the, the guitar classes, there was a children of drums. And I remember, I always remember that. You know, like you remember things like as a child. Yeah, yeah. You always remember like weird moments. Like, you just remember things. Anyway, I remember I tried to play drums and I was horrible. And then one day, after school, I just started to just play. I decided to play more. So what I did... The drum kit was where, sorry? The drum kit was like next to a church, next to the guitar lessons. Yeah. So the man take my class, he's like, yeah, this is not for you. <laughs> so I used to come home and I used to take my mother good pots. Mm-hmm. And we had wooden floors at the time. So I used to stomp on the floor. And I had, you know, those Danish cookies. In the yeah, 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 the blue yeah, for Christmas. Yeah. Every, yeah. You're not sure if you don't have one of them things in your house. Right, so I put a t-shirt in it. You're supposed to have some tread on things. <laughs> After I'm tread it. Oh. Yeah, so I flipped that upside down and I said, I just used to turn on the radio. Right. And I just play songs. And I did so to the music. To the music. And right. that's right, okay. kind of how I got my start. And then... My dad, being a musician, was happy and you know put me in lessons with Von Rick Maynard, who actually lives down the street. Right. Fantastic drummer, he played with Charlie's Roots, Dave Rudder. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great, 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 great guy. I studied with him, but it just became more of, hey, you show me something, I show you something. And that's yeah. where lessons came for me now. Mm. Yeah. Just us like, you know, running things off each other. And then, and what kind of, what age was that? 
That was like 11, 12, yeah? Right, okay, yeah. so you're playing from young, man. Yeah. You're playing from young. Yeah, yeah, and just like, you know, listen to music, always love rock music, so. Yeah, yeah, was, in the early days, it was, yeah. more, it was more the rock. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. They're so still, how are you, how are you going still to the, very how you, into rock. How are you going to the rock? Um, again. Just I, like friends here, hung all the way to school and that kind even, of thing? Or? Not even. Or like, you listen to radio and you just like that? I, I just gravitated to that, you know, 9-5 yeah. was my station, and then, yeah. like, I remember when Cable Chess came up, I never forgot seeing Green Day's video for Basket Cases. Yeah. So that just <laughs> stuck with me. That's actually what made me want to play guitar. Yeah, right, okay. And then, you know, yeah. other, other stuff, like other bands, I was just into it too. That band was my band in Standard Tree. I'm like, in mm. Standard Tree, and I know I like lit. I know I like till I blind. Right. Yeah. I know I like some for the one. I'm like into this kind of music. Yeah, yeah, that right. was just my vibe. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Blink. Of course, that was Travis the, Barker. That's the, that's the, that's the one that really <laughs> set it off. Like, <laughs> ignite the flame for sure, for sure, for sure. Nice man. So, um, what was like your first uh, band experience? Because you, you were learning on your own, and then yeah. like, what was your first experience like playing with people? Playing with people. A, a good brother, man. His name is Alan. He was in, I went to St. Anthony's College, so he was yeah. there with me. Alan, he, well, Alan who? Crane. Crane, okay. Yeah, he's actually a photographer. photographer. Yeah, 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 sports yeah. photographer. Yeah. 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 And he had a guitar, and then, you know, he just used to come over and jam, and then going to St. Anthony's, you met a bunch of the guys who like rock, like Otway. Yeah, yeah. Otway was... Well, oh, Otway was a St. Anthony's Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. He's, he was in my uh, guys like Anthony Abraham. Yeah. Uh, he would come over. I would actually play guitar. I yeah. used to play drums on my drum kit and we would switch or whatever yeah. playing tripped and falling songs. Uh, yeah. Real talk. <laughs> no BS, real talk. And so Dexter was the inspiration. Dexter was the inspiration. <laughs> um, and, um, and then like in Form 4, that's when I met my buddy Alex Oyong, who, mm -hmm. uh, who, uh, who him and I co-founded Five Mass in Midnight. That's when we started to jam like uh, in like, a basement, he had a guitar and that's where the boot of a band came. came right. right, okay. Yeah. Five miles up at night. All right, cool. So, for for those who who don't know, like, what was the sort of um genre of music, or how do you describe the sound of Five Miles? Um, we we had tried to coin not try to coin the phrase, coin the phrase island rock. It was like yeah. You know, we're from Trinidad. Mm -hmm. You want to have a little island vibe. So you have your little local music. flavor, a little local flavor. in the sound, in the sound of it, and like yeah. the way Liam sang. He's Trinidadian, they can't really sound like American because he's Trinidadian. And, yeah. yeah, and that's kind of what we ran with and mm. that's what we did for many years. Right, yeah. okay. So you played at um, local rock events and local rock events. events. Um, big up to Tony Chow. Our first like massive gig was like opening for, for Maroon 5. Wait, wow. was, okay. was, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was massive. <laughs> yeah, Maroon yeah. 5, Fire East Movement and somebody else. Right. I think Kess was in our show, Marshall was in our show and then thanks to Tony again. We yeah. opened for Insert Coin. Right. Let me finish Insert Coin. But Insert Coin was on the gig. Yeah. But we opened for um, Evan Essence. Evan Essence. House played, Orange Sky played like, like Stephen Mali was on that game. Yeah. So we were able to do a lot of nice shows in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. We could talk about that for days. Like you know, the cool <laughs> gigs we did, it was very fun. It was yeah, yeah. Great, 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 great. Which times. was the best, which was, which was like a favorite. favorite um, started out in my mind was definitely that first one. Because mm -hmm. first it was like the most money we ever make as a rock band. <laughs> and it was like a massive stage with like great treatment. I remember I have a video somewhere. Like us in our dressing room. We were all stoked. We have like our own fridge with drinks. We have right. showers. Next, you ever yeah. had our lot, man? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> your own fridge with drinks on your own dressing room. Yo, man. Like, cooler nope. with nope. beers, snacks. <laughs> it was just a real vibe now. Mm. And they gave us dressing room number five. So we was like, yo. Mm. We was like real wilding out. And then the gig was just beautiful. Yeah. Like, we playing songs and people singing them back and we like, wow. Wait. Mm. Like, wait. Like, like a handy crowd hand singing the crowd. your song. And like, we did what, like, does that feel, what does that feel like? That is the most euphoric, unmatched feeling in the world. Right? Wow, it's like, yeah. And I think that's why I, small segue, like mm -hmm. why I like not into drugs or like over drinking or anything because mm -hmm. If you had that experience, that is the highest high. Hey, yeah. He didn't say he don't drink. He said over. I don't like the over drink. It. I don't like the drugs. I drink, but I don't over drink. You don't over drink. Like yeah. never, you'll never see me drunk anywhere. Like guarantee. Yeah. Everybody tell you see me drunk, they like. Yeah, yeah. And it was just the most beautiful feeling. Euphoric. You were, yeah, yeah, like people into what you are doing now. Yeah. It's like you in this moment entertaining them and they like it. Yeah. And when we did this rock and cover. And it's this connection, right? Because definitely. You're connected, you're connected yeah. Yeah. So we did this on rock cover of Barrington Levy, Vice Versa Love. And yeah. I love that. Like, that's one of my was favorite. was like that. And I was just like, yo. <laughs> like, my part didn't even come in and I was freaking out. I was like, mm. this is our moment. It was like a beautiful time in our lives, man. So Sick. Like, give thanks. But five miles also went abroad and played yeah. some shows. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did South by Southwest. 
Ah, we don't want any small. Oh, cool. Does he does he tech conference and is it a tech conference? Um, well, it's, well, it's music. tech and music, right? Yeah, and yeah, film yeah. as well. Oh, and film, film as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The tech aspect is the last thing that that got added. Actually, it started with music and film. And, and then film. Oh, they serious? brought on the interactive yeah. later on. Oh yeah. shoot! Yeah. I know there's a tech conference, but mm. I didn't realize okay. that yeah, I was. Like, that's that's our world. because that's our world, yeah, yeah, our yeah, perspective, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so that South was an West. experience. That was cool. um, yeah. <laughs> an experience. And that same year we did, because we had got some US management, and we did a showcase in New York, mm-hmm. basically inviting labels and da 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 da. Mm-hmm. Got support from Music TT Trainer, so thanks to them. Yeah. Got some corporate support, big up Flow every time. Flow yeah. helped us out yeah. a lot, gave us a big check, so that was cool. Yeah. I mean, again, all towards the trip, it wasn't like money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. One trip in the end, trip yeah, or yeah. something. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so it was cool. So that was really, 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 really nice. That was a really good experience. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but getting like getting sponsorship from somebody like Flo is 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 a uh, not necessarily an easy thing. Like, was he was he was he process yeah. behind that? Like, well, you say you're saying you're saying no real people. Like, <laughs> I can't like, know somebody. That's a serious thing. Them. People understand how important lime is, you know. Mm. <laughs> you know that's a serious thing. Yeah, that's no, yeah, yeah. I'm laughing because I agree with you. That's how deals yeah. are made. So, yeah. good question. We. Twofold. Bert is a genius at writing proposals. Right. So he wrote a proposal, which was the last part, but the first part is our good friend at the time, an ex manager, Janelle Fronten, mm-hmm. was like, Yo, Reese, there's this Canadian film crew mm-hmm. shooting here looking for bands and entertainment, blah, 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 and chefs mm-hmm. to take to Canada for a TV show, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Come and meet them. Uh, all right, cool. Go meet the guy, instantly click. Guy is fun, guy is cool. Mm hmm. We play for their thing. We didn't get selected. Everybody was like, why would you all selected? You're great. Da, 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 da. The guy was like, listen, I owe you one. You have to come to Canada and do it. Blam, it did happen. Okay. But he liked us so much. And not to make it about me, but he just, me and him just connected. Yeah, that's a little get cool. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, listen, I'm going to put you onto the CEO of Flow. Whatever mm-hmm. you need, he's got you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, boom. Oh, okay. <laughs> so sad, so done. Me, the guy, the guy's like, yeah, call the, and it's done. So okay. he really liked you, he really liked the band, but he maybe just for, for, for that yeah. for that thing, yeah. maybe it probably weren't just like, honestly, it was not the right fit. It wasn't the right time. Time it, it, or time. Yeah. Definitely, but it wasn't yeah. the right time. And the time yeah. we did it, it was perfect. We went to Newfoundland, Canada, played right. music, made some amazing friends. Yeah. And again, Fabian is his name, just a good guy. He put me yeah. on to the CEO of Flo, because Flo was a major, major part of that TV show. Right. Um, Club or new releases. It was yeah. on TV all over. Did I add... Who told me to do that? I play every day. People stop in here and tongue. Hey, you use an on the TV and like yes, yes. Which ad is that? I had they did for that TV show called Club on It was on flow. Yes, it was on flow. Yeah. Oh, so it was a foreign ad that was on flow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that let's let's go into that Club on Releases thing for for mm-hmm. people that don't know about it. Basically, that's that's a project where they team up. Um, bands from Trinidad or the yeah. Caribbean. Yeah, with, all, all over the Caribbean yeah. and different provinces in Canada and they mm-hmm. pay you with a group and you create a song. So they come here and we go there. Yeah. So is that, is that chefs training? as well too, actually. Oh, cool. By the way. Okay. That was such an amazing So experience. who's behind that project? Um, Flo and the Canadian flow government. Thing? Yeah. Right, well, okay. not Flo thing. Flo sponsored it, I would say. Yeah. And, um, and the Canadian government, is, it was right. an initiative by the Canadian government. Yeah. And it was so cool going yeah. to Newfoundland like the whitest corner of the globe. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> whitest, coolest corner of the globe. Now. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. actually real close to Greenland or Iceland. It was, it was like real cool. Yeah. yeah. And, but I turned on my phone in there and it was like one degree. I was like, ah. Yeah. I was like, I wear jeans with holes in it. I feel like puppies biting my knees. I'm yeah. like, wow. First, I'll tell you something, eh? Like living in Trinidad, like, so I'm from Maracas Valley, St. Joseph originally. And every now and then, on a Saturday or a Sunday, some neighbor up on the mountain banging some loud music yeah. and you know maybe you might get a little pissed off if you're not kind of into that music but when you travel abroad mm-hmm. and you go to canada or you go to england or whatever and it's so quiet <laughs> it's so quiet the, like there's no nine. car there's no car driving by with a little doom, 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 yeah. doom, doom, you know there's no music in the distance it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. no chickens <laughs> no birds singing nothing. out of time in chicken yeah, yeah. You know, the roosters that, it yeah. is dead ass at like nine yeah yeah, yeah. Everybody's sleeping <laughs> Wait, what's going on here? <laughs> it was just quiet 
<laughs> so it is. Yeah. So I appreciate it, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, the the flow cool, the flow sponsorship was to go to South by Southwest. To, yeah. What was he What was he plan with South by Southwest? Like y'all had a particular mission going yeah, there. Yeah, our or? mission was again to try to get as many ears because we felt like we were export ready. We had an album. We were ready. We had good songs, and we just thought that we just needed to get in front of the right people. And mm-hmm. Trinidad and Tobago, I want to see the government. Mm-hmm. There was a Trinity stage, basically, mm-hmm. where they had, like, big acts from Trinidad. So Trinidad James was actually part of it. Right. And this guy was saying, what is love? Baby, he's actually a Tobagonian living in the States. So he had a massive hit. So they were headlining in the stage. Hmm? You see, it's kind of strange. Mm, that but, song is not, uh... What's... That's not Night City Roxbury. I... What is love? Don't... Baby, don't hurt me. Yeah. That's not Night of the Roxbury. Nah, that's not true. Not your man name. I can't remember his No, but the movie. Name. The movie, Night of the Rocks. A Night at the Roxbury or mm. something. The, that's the song from that. Mm. And they're doing the head bobbing. Yeah. <laughs> you don't it's know that? It, 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 was, it was a Saturday Night Light uh, live skit. And then they turned it into a whole oh, movie. <laughs> so what you telling me is the guy that sings that song. It's Trini. Is a Trini? Trini? Oh, actually, yes. Yeah. You could Google it and tell I me. Gotta What's Google, his name? I gotta Google that shit, right? Yeah. Hardaway? Hardaway. Right. To be going on. <laughs> what? Yeah. I actually did not know this at all either. Yeah. Hardaway. Wikipedia. Oh, wow. A German Trinidadian yeah. vocalist. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. so he, Look at that piece of trivia you just yeah, dropped yeah, yeah. Born in Trinidad and Tobago. Hardaway moved to Washington, D.C. area. You just blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. So he was oh, here, like, not him and Trinidad James, and we played as well. I right, Sasha played. Like, I want to play this. Played. I want to get play this song, but we might get flagged on YouTube. You know, like, what is that? <laughs> I think you can play a certain amount me. of it. You can play like eight seconds, maybe. Yeah, Dread. Cut it in. Spice it in. Hmm. In the edit. You know the song next? Or you, you can't Yeah, yeah, nah, I know the song. Oh, you know I, the I song? I just had no idea as a, a, a Trini. Yeah. Wow. Billy Ocean is Trini, too. Yeah. I know, I know Billy Ocean. Well, I hope guy, he, I hope he make real money. From I think he did. I think he did. A guy who lives down the road in Forbes, he played bass in Hot Chocolate. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I believe in miracles. And where he looking now? You see us. Yes. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Yada do the. Yeah. Ebro. Yeah. Hey, Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. <laughs> All right. Let's let's pull that before. Uh, yeah. As he begins, like, we might EDM. get away with that. <laughs> yeah, EDM awesome. was that was EDM. So wait, this guy was at South right? by Southwest. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, he performed yeah, in okay. 2016. Cool. I want to say mm. 2016 South by Southwest. They had mm. a Trinidad stage and we did it. Um, um, I don't think we got the results we wanted, but again, sometimes everything is not about. We went, we signed a deal. Yeah. I live in Beverly Hills driving a Range Rover. <laughs> no. But I met a fantastic musician. My name is Sketch. Still very good friends. He plays music. He's like a one man band, but yeah. looking for members. Okay. And so, again, relationships built. Yeah. You, know, you meet people all the time. So it was nice. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but you're, and you all ended up getting some gigs out of that as well, you said. Um, now, what we did from that, we just did a showcase in New York. Right. And again, it didn't go exactly as we wanted it to do, but we were able to. It was just something that we wanted to do, and I think we didn't have the exact know-how of mm-hmm. like, okay, how does one do a showcase? Like, how mm-hmm. do you get certain bodies in a room to hear a band? Da, 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 da. So yeah. All right. But now you think if Five Miles was, was to do something like that, you could kind um, of set it up better. Definitely, because um, I jump in again off the heels of doing that writing camp with Nyla in Miami for Nyla Blackman's new album. Okay. That showed me how the music industry works now. Mm. Like, the business of it. I never mm-hmm. understood the business. Right. I was just always playing. I was always a guy organizing things. But the business of music, yeah. where the real money is, where I have, where I have to do to make sense, mm-hmm. mm. that is why I learned that. And it's, I am actually, that's why, even though the band is now, um, a lot of members have left, a lot of members have switched up. Right. I still want to keep it going because I understand the power of music and how it works, and I just excited for a new mm-hmm. front here. Mm-hmm. A band always had to be six men, five men in a room jamming now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It is for that kind of done now. Yeah, yeah, the front time yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I know real bands as two men. Mm-hmm. Two yeah. men doing interviews, but then on stage they have a band backing them up, etc. Et yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. As yeah. I was telling you before the recording, like I heard the um the YouTube video thing Yeah, with, with blacks. With blacks. That yeah. was real wicked, boy. Yeah, 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 that yeah. was yeah. wicked. That was wicked. Big up to Mark Tavno R. I. P. He yeah, actually boy. makes a vision of it. it True. It's on um so on his page. On SoundCloud, right. still right, one okay. of my favorite songs. That's I need to look for that. Then. It's one of my favorite. <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. Like, cause we recorded it, man. Black yeah. like, it's one we recorded it and uh, mixed. I was no time next time. I was like, man, I would love to hear like a proper version. Of, of course, yeah, yeah. it's out. It's out. So only SoundCloud. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, check out. Yeah. So you're looking to do more of, of that kind of definitely. more that kind of stuff. Definitely. Yeah. It's just hard because it doesn't. It's expensive to record a band and then. Like you know, they gonna make money from it, so it's like to put that money. I don't know. It's like uh, yeah, you're just gonna because mm-hmm. you know where where would that get played? I mean, well, it, it would I mean, get played in carnival. Definitely not. Um, yeah, but but big up Mike Ross. He loves it. He plays it a lot. Yeah, radio ra- radio likes it. So I think you we get need paid to played on radio. Yeah, I yeah. think we just need to find a way to create them more in a more affordable way. Mm. And I think that's it. That's 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 what we need to do. Find a way to create yeah. them more affordable. So if we can pull out like. If we look at like the local sort of rock rock scene, if you will, I mean you've you've managed to 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 sort of like monetize or or, or make money, mm. you know, because you've branched off into into a boom boom room and mm. there's definitely like a demand there and now you're playing yeah. in all of these different events and traveling and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, what about the local rock scene? Like, how do you? I mean, I know you guys did a it was a TV commercial for Did You Sell? Yeah, yeah. Did You Sell? I, I believe. Yeah. Um. Like how do how do people sort of or is it possible to like make a living out of hmm. out of if you were to be strictly like a, a band entry and not? I don't want a rock band, right? I want a rock band, yeah. Um Tough. Tough. Yeah, <laughs> tough. I mean Dexter could speak to this as well, right? <laughs> He's kinda of yeah, been yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. For, for me for me, I mean I'm I'm in quite a few bands, but it's really a hobby for me. It's like yeah. is is a is a passion of mine, you know? Yeah. And I mean because you know they, they don't have loads of drummers um mm. you know somebody here you play and they're cool easy to get along with it's like mm-hmm. come and drum for my band you know mm-hmm. and it could just easily <laughs> go from there you know you end mm-hmm. up in five six bands or whatever yeah. um but yeah for me is it was always about the fun the only time i actually um kind of went to take it to the next level was when Tripped and Fallen went to London. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and that was more the band deciding to make that decision and I kinda got roped in in the process. But um it's it's real hard. The market here is small for rock. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think you have to you have to get out of Trinidad if you That's wanna do to rock. Do. Look, just as as much as Boom Boom Room is a Trinidad thing, yeah. mm-hmm. we spend more time playing outside. And that's if you're not a rock band, that's what you have to do. Yeah. yeah. And I think that is what I started to realize with Five Minutes at Midnight now. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, again, six people with jobs and lives and families to leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For us to really do what we need to do, that's what we needed to do now. Yeah. And I don't think people, I don't think everyone was ready to make that move now. Yeah. So yeah. at that point, I, mean, I realized... Yeah, you're taking a risk as well, right? Of course. Risk, of course especially if you have risk. a secure um, job Pre- or if you're married and is, uh, with a child, it's even more difficult yeah. to, yeah. to kind of yeah. take that risk. Yeah, you know? so... That's what you have to do, and that's why Boom Room is scaled on. It's two of us, yeah, yeah. And we kind of on the same mission now. Like we jump on a plane and we make it happen now. Mm-hmm, like, let's mm-hmm. let's do this now. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why I've been finding a lot more of well, not more a lot. I've ha- been having recent success with Boom Boom Room because it's easy. Mm-hmm. It's easy in terms of getting people from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. It's easy because you made links with indie circle. Yeah. I wish I could have done that for rock. I wish I had known more rock promoters and mm-hmm. rock clubs and rock spaces. I would have loved yeah. to do that because I know we could have killed it. We could have been like the biggest thing in the world. But yeah. Because coming from China, the market is weird. Yeah. The people not tech, people not buying what we sell in. So not, you don't have the numbers. You don't have the numbers. You don't have it's the too numbers. niche. Yeah. It's too niche. It's, yeah, you don't have the numbers. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. I hear yeah. So when you kind of first started off like the... the the dream was was the more the music rock band definitely, drama definitely kind of vibes. I'm, I, I I'm glad I see that because I remember I have this dream. Me and my friends Tony Will in a van playing <laughs> stages, mm-hmm. and then I'm like hey, God, please, I swear I want to do this. I want to do this, and then I realized, but wait, but doing it do, <laughs> but, just, but just with a different project now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like wow, look at that. No, so I mean, you ask for something and you do you get it. You don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I think you, I think you've been lucky, and I mean, in yeah. a way, in a way, it's um, 
it wasn't even kind of planned, you know. Mm-hmm. Is 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 and through, the, whole life is through the through the scorch thing? He was like, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll do yeah, that, yeah, you know. Yeah. And just kind of one thing led to another, and then now it's like, no, you it's know, like a job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it's like work. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's definitely. Like, but you that's also awesome. you also do stuff with um, Stefan Rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was lucky mm-hmm. to meet him. Well, I know him since high school days. Yeah, since playing playing in rock bands coming up, he was in a rock band as well. Okay, and then he hit me up with this. He does the classic guitar, classical guitar, yeah, and classical kind of thing. and flamenco. Yeah. All right, yeah, and you know, He's and crazy up, good. Yeah, yeah. Play, playing a car horn with him was real different, mm-hmm. and that again opened up some crazy doors. It's like, yeah. what? And it's just been so cool. Like working with him is a dream. He's like one of the nicest people ever. Yeah. With all his dad jokes, he had like a book of dad jokes all the time. But Sounds like, like my kind of guy. I mean, I'm not a dad, but my wife tells me that my jokes are, sound like dad jokes. You know, it's just so cool that, and that's how I realized I'm like, wow, like I'm actually playing music mm-hmm. yeah. for a living. And I think that's the mold anybody would have to follow if you want to make a living. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Travel when you can and play with acts that work in. Right. Yeah. You have to play with an act that work in. You can't be in a. Waiting for something to happen. Yeah, you yeah. have to. And I think that's where the boom room came about. And I wanted to have a gig that was mine. I didn't want to have to be like waiting on somebody to be like, hi, I wonder if you'd like to play for us. No, mm-hmm. I make my gig. Mm-hmm. And and especially if music is becoming your life, yeah. where you're paying your bills, etc. You kind of want to be in a position to make those calls now. Mm-hmm. You're depending and hoping for something to put from your sky now. Yeah. You put things in place for it to happen for you. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Nah, that's good advice, man. That's good advice. Yeah. What sort of advice do you think you would have for, for you know, that, that young uh, person who wants to be in a band or play yeah. drums or music or, or whatever, like, that as a, as a journey? Like, what do you think is the, um, the way to go? Or just um, kind of enjoy it for the love of it, but, but what, what do you think? Keyword, love. You have to yeah. like it first. You have to love it first. Because yeah. if you're running into anything to make money you're going to bounce your head real hard especially yeah. with music yeah. you have to have a passion for it but kids nowadays are super 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 lucky mm-hmm. with the advent of like internet Instagram digital mm-hmm. marketing like yeah. they have it I mean as much as it's easy it's harder because mm-hmm. there's a lot more there's coming a lot to more you now. people as mm-hmm. well out there yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, to me spend time meeting people that yeah. is that a test to where I am today. The fact that I'm sitting here today is because I took the time to talk to Dexter and yeah. become friendly with Dexter. Yeah. Dexter need to borrow your drum stool. True. Dexter hear this music. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And I became friends with Dexter. Dexter now knows me. I now know Dexter. Anybody mm-hmm. I know know Dexter. Anybody Dexter knows me. True. Mm-hmm. That's how these things happen. Yeah. Somebody say, hey, so you're, I you to work talk on about your personal connection. And that is one yeah. of the most important things. Yeah. Being a person, I ain't saying be friendly to everybody, yeah. but leave your house sometimes. Put go yourself out, out there. <laughs> have a drink, buy somebody a drink, have a conversation, yeah. Yeah. go places, go to meet and greet, yeah. put yourself out there. Because you know yeah. why? When somebody needs something, whatever feel you in, they mm-hmm. must think of you now. Yeah. You need an artist, who you thinking of? You need a painter, who you thinking of? Yeah. You need a makeup artist, who you thinking of? Yeah. Make sure you are the person that people come to. First. Yeah. And it's crazy, yeah. Eh? Sometimes you you in a party or a lime or something and you do realize who you are and I'm next to, you know? Normal. And you could just be like, hey, we drinking, boy, you know, like start out the conversation and next thing you know oh well that's what you do wow I didn't know that and I just do this mm-hmm. you should link up yeah and that's how it go yeah mm-hmm. I'm yeah. Job done. Yeah. yeah yeah it's actually a theme because we've done uh, we've done a, f- a few interviews now and it's actually a theme that we're seeing where 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 people who kind of doing their own thing mm-hmm. like like you guys yeah mm-hmm. one on one hand like they're not afraid to dig into into unfamiliar territory yeah and they're not afraid to pull up their sleeves and figure out something mm-hmm. yeah but at the same time common theme connections and people yeah. so like if they don't know how to do something they know somebody who could do it <laughs> yeah or yeah. if they need to get in a room to speak to a certain person like they yeah. could they could figure it out through like yeah. a, a common connection or whatever you mm-hmm. know yeah you know it's one thing we didn't talk about too you actually gave drum lessons for for a bit yeah yeah yeah. And uh, I think when he fits William, yeah, son, son, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> but you kind of stop doing that now. You're yeah, too busy cause, with yeah, because I just didn't have the time and I didn't have a space anymore. I used to give lessons in a space, and that space became yeah, it wasn't available anymore. Yeah. I think that's actually what killed it because mm. um, yeah, people, I just didn't have the space anymore. 
But now I'm, I might have my kids at my house more, so I'm me, yeah. me get back into it. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was that was a fun time too, boy. Just mm-hmm. me, and I said meet tons of people too. Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And you um, you got endorsed by is Truth. Yeah, Truth got some drums and yeah. TRX and yeah. 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 How yeah, how 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 that happen? Like here, meet me. <laughs> 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 so um, Aguila was at the time actually came from a birthday or something. Took me to this concert in New York. And a band called August Burns Red Play. Yeah. yeah. So Matt Griner is the drummer. Yeah, boy. And I was like, so, I stoked to meet him now. So I ended up chatting with him. I was like, yo, I love the drums. He's like, yeah. Um, you want to get some? I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, all right, take this guy email and tell him I send you. And boom. Wow. So I was I, like, all right. You know, I don't think I agree with this story before. Serious? Yeah. yeah. So Matt I had his email, normal. And wow. I just email the people from Truth. They ask for some videos. They ask for something, and yeah, I, I get a deal with them. Hmm. But but those deals are a little less glamorous. I think I'll, yeah. I'll be hundred percent honest because the drums are expensive, but mm. they give you a discount. Right. I mean, I was able to buy it, but right. I oh, you can get, get, get free uh, free drums. Nah, hardly ever. You always get free drums. Okay. Hardly ever. Mm. Right. Okay. Yeah, because you got me. I guess each time she still has to make money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. and so she had my level of endorsement. I was now coming up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they were able to give me stuff at a discounted price. Yeah, but um. Yeah, that's how that happened. Mm. And TRX was all social media. Let's reach out to them and they're mm. like, yeah, well, send us who you are. Yeah. Mm. Tell them I was the truth. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. Right. Those companies kind of work together. Usually, the guys who play those two companies. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that worked. Again, another massive discount. Very happy. Mm-hmm. And I still use the gear up to today. It's good gear. So, mm-hmm. I'm yeah. happy about that. Yeah, yeah. I find that, um, like, you are very. Well, <laughs> you were saying in the front earlier, but I find you real active on, on Instagram and that kind of thing. Yeah. And I feel as if that's the way, well, that's one way now mm-hmm. for people to kind of network and, Definitely. you know, meet people. Yeah. People so, always on their phones. Yeah, yeah. So would you say, like, have you met anybody in particular, like, online on Instagram that, like, you know, formed some kind of new um, connection or opportunity to do anything or... Um. Yeah, I I would say so. So like definitely TRX because I reach out to them on Instagram mm-hmm. and um, a lot of events we do, especially in the states, mm-hmm. are all people all DM us, like right, a lot okay. of weddings and stuff. People are like yo, hi, do you guys do weddings? Yeah, hey. and it's all pretty much from Instagram. Wait. And um, yeah. That's why you need right? Hashtag is important. <laughs> Can't put hashtag basketball. No, you gotta put what are you doing that. Yeah, it's a serious thing. You can yeah. have to be strategic with the hashtag as well. Like, I see people, mm-hmm. like, if you have a company and you're only targeting, you know, people in Trinidad and Tobago, it do make sense to be using these, like, real general, mm-hmm. general hashtags because people around the whole world are yeah. going to see it. See it yeah. But in the case of what you're doing, you could use a more general hashtag yeah. mm-hmm. because. You could fly out there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was real good talking to you. I nah, likewise. I appreciate <laughs> this. It's real cool, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'll... Yeah, man. So, if people want to um, reach out to you on, on social media, in, so, in, Instagram sounds like the like the place to be, um, to yeah, check you Instagram out. Instagram or, or Facebook. Um, What's the handle on Instagram? Um, for Boom Boom Room, is Boom Boom Room TT. Boom Boom Room TT. And okay. then my name is Reese the, Be- the Beast. Reece right. The Beast on, nice. on IG, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Andrew give me that name. I'm scared. <laughs> all right. All right, well, Reese the Beast, it was nice. Thank yeah, you man. guys for having me. This is our vibe. Yeah, that's what's coming on, man. Yeah. All right, bro. Take so it easy. All right. All right, bye. Later.